What's up, I made in this myself build vlog. Do you fancy another barn episode? Let's talk through a few things that I've been left with. The roof, I had the bloke from the manufacturer come out the other day, the complaints bloke. Um, made friends with him, kind of, built up a bit of rapport and everything. Issues with the roof, I'll drop in a couple of pictures now. Um, some sheets are like matte, matte colour, others are like glossy kind of colour. Some sheets are different colours to others. Others are mottled, others don't have the bottom roll spray properly. So th there's like obviously several issues with that. That's a turnip um, roofing. I regret not going for Sembrit now or Kembrit, however you want to say it. But we're going to see obviously what the outcome is on that. Um, he did say one possible outcome is to monitor it to see if it improves or get worse. And I was like, uh, that I'm not having that. You don't buy a new car and then the dealer goes, oh, well, yeah, the panels are different colors, but we'll leave it 10 years and see if it blends in. We'll see what happens. Another issue as well, actually. Okay, when the blokes were fitting it, I said that I wanted a 50 mil overhang so I can get into my gutter. And here on this edge, that's about 80 mil here. And by the time it gets down to the other end, that's 120 mil. I have no idea how they managed to do that. That's the reason why I was up on the roof all of the time, making sure that they was doing things properly. I think what happens was towards the end, this was like the last bit that he'd done. And the, the governor, Sid, he got down off on the roof because he'd like go, go off a lever. He was an old geezer and he couldn't just in the afternoon, he couldn't do it basically. I think the young geezers, they was doing this last bit. And for some reason, obviously they've just come off. I wasn't checking it. I would, would, you, would you need to do like lean over their shoulder and check their measuring tape or something? So my gutter in, I've really got a few samples. I'm going for galvanized. This is one, two, five millimeters. So I think that might just grab it. So I'm gonna go for this and then um, we'll see if the rain actually falls into it. If not, I might have to nip the end of that off, possibly. But obviously if the, the roof sheets get totally replaced by the manufacturer, then I can get the roofing gazes to put it on properly. Just here is a bag of insulation, just the offcuts from like when the bricklayers were doing the cavity insulation. This was originally going to get thrown away and I pulled it out of the throw pile and bagged it up in this. And I'm glad I did because there's gaps around at the tops like here and up there. I'm not sure why they just didn't put it in. Um, there was loads of gaps around at the top of the gables as well. I'd already filled that in before the roof went on. There was actually a brand new insulation left over that was obviously was ordered for this job and that I'd essentially paid for. But the main contractor wanted that back when the brick layers went, even though obviously it's not been finished. Because I called him off, he wanted a load of materials that were left here, even though we'd paid for them. Um, some of that was blocks here. And uh, he wanted the pallets returned because uh, the builders merchants charge him £15 each for each one and uh, he also wanted the lintels as well so he wanted to come to the site and to get a bit of wood and I said no you're not, you're not coming or L Lou had emailed him well I'd emailed him through Lou's, Lou's email and basically said he's, he wasn't welcome we've paid him more than enough for all of this stuff and we want to keep it so we've still got that Lucky enough, I've still got the insulation. So I'm going to stuff them little bits there because I've got to put the cavity closes in. And you've got to sort the windows out. The bricklayers hadn't quite finished, even though they'd been paid for the whole job, essentially. Um, I got on all right with the bricklayers. I did uh, message one of them to come and pick up my main contractor's nail gun because I didn't want to obviously see the main contractor. He knew that there was bits left to do and I would have imagined that he, he would offer to say, oh, do you want me to pop around for an hour and sort out them last little bits? But he hasn't. So there's a little bit of block work to do. I can't be asked to like get them round or even pester them. They know that they, they should have done it. 
obviously they, they, they can't be bothered. So I'm going to do a bit of block work, a little bit there and a little bit here. It's not that hard, is it? You just got, it's not brain surgery. It's, uh, there's another few bits as well. So originally the whole site was sloping and that side was built up more than this side. Because the whole site was reduced down, then behind this wall, originally it was meant to be retaining and narrowed, well, it didn't have to be in the end. There was supposed to be earth behind that wall as well, which meant there should have been tanking on the other side, but that didn't go in because there was no need for it really. But the structural warranty um, person, he's come round and he said that we still need tanking on this side. So obviously that's left for me to do now because I paid someone else to do it, but they didn't. So I'd said to him, I was gonna put the bitumen paint all the way down here. And he said, yeah, that's fine. You can do that. He said, but he wants the mortar channeled out of here and the plastic needs to basically go in to that when, when I put the whole DPM on this. What I might do is do the same as what's happened around the other sides. I, I'm not quite sure why it didn't get done on here, but that's life. It's so like this been lapped in. So yeah, I need to do the same thing. So whilst we're talking about tanking, I've also got to do the tanking around here now as well. So obviously the, this wall is much higher than obviously over here. So this earth needs to be built back up. And uh, there was a bit of a discussion about it before um, between the bricklayer and the main contractor. I did give them the, uh, the, the technical drawing for how the tanking should have been done. And he didn't want to do it that way. He said that he's, he's done it before and he knows what he's doing, um, which I, I question. Um, so yeah, this all needs tanking. So it will be the bitumen paint and then it's like a plastic membrane from research anyway. That's what he was gonna do. So obviously that's what I'll have to do as well. And then it will come up and then it laps over here. The issue with that, I'll show you. So obviously this is quite high, higher than this. And uh, I was quite happy to like reduce this down. But what I didn't realize was when I was having the conversations about it and I was standing there and I said, yeah, I'm happy with this. I think my main contract forgot, but the bricklayer shouldn't have forgot that I still need a 150 difference between the outside and the damp course. So basically the finish is going to be down here. I forgot about that and I thought I was going to have it up here, but obviously there's no damp course up here. That's the level of it. So a bit of a balls up really. So I need to reduce this area a lot more than I thought that I was going to have to. Oh, I'm stacking it. Which is going to probably cause issues with this wall and make it a little bit unstable. So I might have to do some kind of underpinning under there. It's just a bit of a nightmare. Look at this as well. What? Why would you do that? And all of this isn't pointed up, so. I need to sort that out. Another issue. So your damp course layer needs to be 150 millimetres above the outside area. And um, the brick layer, he'd always said, he, he, I remember him making a point of it, that it needs to be two bricks out of this. So I've got my level going across. That is only 100 mil. So I have no idea why that happened whether they couldn't be bothered to put in an extra brick or something but obviously because that's too low now i need to rip out this whole slab now which is a pain in the ass <laughs> so yeah i need to take out all of this all of this all of that all the way down there so i can drop the whole lot basically then this area here i did say something at the time i said oh, that's a bit high in it Obviously you can see they're two blocks out. So obviously it's trench fill, trench blocks, and then that's a concrete block on top. Um, I hadn't anticipated it coming out that high. 
And I said, well, why is that so high? And they said, well, we, we thought you was building up. That's what Sean said, because they was looking at the wall and there's, a, there's some trench blocks just over there. But they only come out a little bit, like 100 mil up there, 200 mil here, max. Even my bricklayer at the time that done me wall said, you're going to see them. And I said, no, it's fine. I'll put like a little plant planter up against that or something. So I don't know what my bricklayer's expected. I think my main contractor expected me to basically bring in 500 tonne of topsoil saying, and just bring the whole level of this up. Obviously, I, I would imagine he's not got experience on on level ground or something, but if I was to bring that up, like 400 mil, that's gonna make this a retaining wall, which is not designed to be in the first place. And uh, it's obviously supposed to be 1.8 meters higher. If I build it up that much, I'm gonna end up seeing over the wall, which is ridiculous. So I'm not gonna build it up that high. What I'm gonna do is um, that top block, I'm gonna render that. I think they're called pargetin or something like that. I'll just do that and then I'll bring obviously the rest of the level up to the bottom. The issue with that is when they've done these piers, the bottom block, they haven't cut to size. So I'll have to take that off and knock it out so it's square down and then I can run the render all the way across so it'll look nicer. Probably paint it black or something. There's quite a lot of pointing that needs doing here and there, and uh, obviously the mortar's splashed up with bricks and stuff, so I'll have to clean the bricks down. This bit where you can see the blocks, I didn't mind this bit, I already agreed to that in the first place, so I'm gonna put like a big um, patio up here. I was gonna do decking, but Lou doesn't like decking. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to keep these blocks and we can I'll lay like a stone patio almost. I know a few of you that are watching are builders and stuff. Um, this has puzzled me a little bit. I'm not sure quite what to do with it. Obviously they've cut the blocks so it sits there and they've still the cavity there. Um, I was just going to fill it with concrete or something, but then, then it's a, almost like a thermal bridge between the outside and the inside. I'm not, I'm not, really sure how to deal with that. Have you got any ideas? Obviously there might be an issue with uh, damp as well, so I'll probably need to write, wrap BPM up that or something. Maybe I'll ask my building inspector, he'll probably know what to do. But yeah, I mean, I'm relatively up to date in terms of my vlogs, so by the time you see this, you probably will be able to help me out. <sighs> what else, what else? You see where they've not pointed it up there properly. I'm going for an airtight, relatively airtight build um, because I'm going for the mechanical heat recovery ventilation system. There's certain requirements, regulations that need to be met in terms of airtightness and how much air gets lost. You need to have a test because it's a new build rather than a conversion now. Um, so things like that, that's where air escapes. So ideally, this should have a certain level of air tightness, but because the mortar's not in all of the gaps, there's loads of holes everywhere. So what I'm thinking doing is doing a wet coat over the top before I dot and dab. You can do a uh, sand and cement, um, but I believe there's, a, you can get this stuff called a uh, sound coat. You can do six mil and then um, it, it, wet plaster essentially is airtight if you do it thick enough that is. So I think I'm probably gonna do that. I've had a little go with backing plaster before and it was like light as hell. I've never really plastered before or anything, but I think I might do that. And because see, it doesn't need to be crisp or anything. I might just do it myself. Well, actually, if I do it, if it's gonna get done, I'm doing it myself. And then we can get proper air tightness and everything. This, all the windows and everything, they need to be sealed. The ceiling needs to be sealed. So cracking on today, one of the things that I'm doing is getting ready for the cavity closers. So I'll go round, I'll put all the missing insulation in like I've done there. The bricks on the outside are a different level to the blocks on the inside. Only by like 10 mil or so, five to 10 mil. 
but I'm not really happy with that. I'm going to put a cavity closer on the bottom as well as the sides so it will all level up nice. I've already done this one before. So I've just spread some mortar on top, leveled it off. I'm going to do the same over there. Obviously, if it's too thin, um, it will crack anyway. But we can put some plasticizer in, uh, maybe a bit of SBR to sort that as well. I'm going to do... Basically, I'm going to sort out. This one's totally off. That That's low. This is higher. This is higher. This is low. <laughs> I'm going to sort that out. The sooner I get that done, the sooner I can measure out and the sooner, sooner I can get my windows. I was, uh, there was a couple of firms that I was going to, thinking of using and uh, one was on social media that contacted me. They was going to give me a discount and it was going to be... Uh, a case study but because I delayed them a little bit because I had an issue with the planning and then by the time I got back to them I chased them three times saying right okay then when does it you quote for me for what what's the you value on on them they didn't respond in the end and then I was just like right okay do I actually want to spend all of that money for people that are unreliable and for something that I could pretty much do myself. I fitted win windows before the UPVC. The only reason why I was copying out on this was, was because of that. But I almost can't justify paying someone like three or four grand extra to fit windows that I can fit myself quite easily. It's not that hard, it's not difficult at all. I might struggle a bit with that but for the cost saving, I reckon it's worth it because obviously they're, they're, they're probably making more than three or four grand anyway because when they get the windows off the window companies, they give them a massive discount anyway. I'll, I'm going to go down to the manufacturer. They're going to charge me, try and charge me retail price. And I'm going to try and get trade price on it. We'll see how that goes. That's enough of me talking, eh? Let's get some action. Uh, I'm going to clean the seals. I'll do that one there's quite a lot of stuff on that i'll do the insulation around the edges i'll do the mortar on the window sills and then i'm gonna have a go at block laying here i've only ever laid one block in my life and i didn't really do it properly <laughs> and that block was over in that corner there
next day. That got pretty bloody difficult last night because it was dark, I was balancing, it was wobbly and I'm handicapped at the moment. If you've seen the last episode, I nearly chopped my thumb off. So yeah, uh, there you go. And then this bit down here as well, I've done this bit. I'll show you, I'll give you a closer look. See, not, not too shabby. Obviously, I didn't really get the joints properly like pointed. It was just too dark. I couldn't see what I was doing really. And I mean, it took me long enough. That took me ages, that did. You can see on the ends, these blocks, I've done the, the mortar too thick there and then they spaced across and then I tried to correct it on the next one, which I did. And then the next one I've done exactly the same. So I'm gonna nip that little bit off and that little bit off and then it'll be straight. But saying that, this comes out at an angle anyway. So I don't know whether it's something to do with the other wall. It's probably not straight or something. But yeah, I mean, that'll do. That'll do. Considering I've never done it before, I don't think I've done too bad. I mean, like, just say, if I built a few walls, then I'd be pucker at that. I'm, I'm much better at tiling. I'm good at tiling. I like tiling. This was a little bit difficult the, because the blocks were dry, the water was just getting sucked out of the mortar really quickly and I, I wasn't really sure how to deal with that because I was obviously taking too long. I couldn't like bang it down a little bit because the mortar was too dry by that point. I wetted up the mortar again. It was just getting a bit mental and then I ended up bought using water down SBR just on the blocks just to give me that little bit of extra time. So it stayed. I'll show you the window seals as well. So that's all flat now. That's nice. I've done that one. I've done that one over there as well. I've done all of these on this side. I still need to square up this one over here and then them two in there. And then I can start putting the um, cavity closes on. See, so yeah, my thumb's still not right. I can't pick up anything properly because I've got a big gash in the end of it. It's a good job I can bend my thumb that way. So I use this when I pick stuff up. Can you bend your thumb like that? <laughs> I think I'm going to leave this one here because I've got some other stuff to do anyway. Um, I'm buying a trailer. A, that's a bit mashed uh, to restore just a little one to collect things because I'm buying a second hand kitchen on Sunday um, I'm going to sort that out and stick it in the cart lodge like use some of it I'm going to spray the cabinets up and make it look all nice and stuff um, you'll see that in a different episode if you haven't already please do subscribe hit the thumbs up button push the bell notification thanks for watching I'll see you later.